So hey everyone, welcome to the NFTX governance call. This is the first one uh, that we've had since we've moved across to, we've changed the cadence from once a month to once every two months. Uh, it's usually the first Wednesday of the month. Um, this month there was a few people away last week, so we moved it across uh, to this Wednesday, uh, May 11th. Uh, today, we're going to uh, hear from CAPS uh, about the uh, NFTX product and a bit of the roadmap and have a look at a presentation from him. Um, and we're also going to hear from the NFTI, NFTI team as well about their products. But uh, to start with, I'll pass it over to Alex to have a few words before we pass it to Chop, to CAPS. Um, cool. Thanks, Javery. And uh, yeah, so we've moved to the bi-monthly schedule now. Uh, this is the first time, I guess, that we've had two months be uh, since our previous meeting. A uh, lot of good stuff happening, uh, despite the market not doing very well. Uh, our metrics are doing pretty great. Uh, I think we're near all-time high for amount of users interacting with our uh, protocol. Um, and also just our TVL, even though it's probably dropped a bit, given the price falls the last week or two. But uh, yeah, you know, on the product side, things are going really well. Uh, protocol wise, we're still working on migrating towards Uni V3, um, which we're hoping to have ready by, you know, the next meeting, I guess two months from now. And uh, product wise, CAPS has a lot of awesome ideas that he's going to walk us through today. So uh, I'll pass it off to Caps. Just before you jump on Caps as well, I didn't do it up front, but I will just anyone that's joining uh, and comes in, we are going to be recording this and we will put this up. So uh, yeah, if you don't want to be recorded, don't don't speak during the recordings. We'll put this up on YouTube afterwards. Thanks. Thanks, Avery. Oh, hopefully you can see my screen in a second. Is that loaded? Yep. Great. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'm going to take through a short presentation on the kind of plan for the NFTX product over the next few months, um, and then looking a bit further out. Uh, but yeah, uh, first of all, just recapping on, on everything that we're kind of focusing on and what we're trying to achieve here. So obviously, we've come a long way since the original kind of index idea of like. Uh, multiple assets pulled together and, and allowing people to speculate and trade on on NFT index tokens and move towards this kind of marketplace that's really driven by the, the NFTX liquidity protocol. So like the main goals for NFTX um, are to either in deepen liquidity or increase volume. So the kind of flywheel, the basic flywheel here is with deeper liquidity, we can attract more volume and more volume generates more fees, which attracts more liquidity as these fees flow back to the liquidity providers. So we believe that it's deep floor liquidity for NFT collections would be like a critical building block for all the kind of DeFi NFT composability stuff that we're seeing moving forward. Um, and right now NFTX is leading this niche like really, really well. So the product goals are just to further establish this this kind of moat that we're building and and building on what we already know to be successful so yeah so quick highlights um so tvl increased from 50 million in july last year to 55 million in april um, which is a pretty massive increase in nine months um, and i think we started seeing some really good product market fit uh our 30 day active users as alex kind of alluded to then is now like at all-time highs, doubled in a month, um, and, and the yields that we're seeing as well with that TVL, kind of three percent of the entire TVL is being generated as, as yield every month. So uh, we're seeing like some really strong metrics at the moment, and we think still we are very early in the whole DeFi NFT movement. So how do we get here? Um, kind of coming back to that flywheel that I mentioned before. We just have this kind of simple um, volume, liquidity, and fee generation flywheel where the more volume generates the more fees, which attracts more liquidity. So what started this flywheel, and this is kind of going back to early product um, like iteration, was basically our kind of proof of concept marketplace. So yeah, we had NFTX protocol, and then the product team you know, thought 
the best way to demonstrate the value of this protocol would be to actually just create a simple marketplace um, to start building on volumes and generating fees and, and attracting liquidity. Um, but actually in recent months, we're seeing aggregators like GEM uh, take over some of that um, marketplace activity and, and our front end is becoming less critical, um, which, is, which is a really nice like maturing thing to see. So GEM's now been driving uh, much more volume for us and we expect you know more aggregators to do the same thing moving forward. Um, looking to speed up this flywheel, uh, we've got like a few different kind of areas that are coming. So one is the protocol upgrades that we're going to see with Uniswap V3, which would just be such a monumental improvement. We'll have like 1% fees on all AMM activity. We'll have the, the TWAPs for price oracles for other TFI apps to integrate, concentrate liquidity, which would be amazing. And then like order book stuff as well. So like limit orders on the buys and sells of, of NFTs. Um, we're also looking at like listings, so allowing users to trade up their floors into higher tier assets or trade down their higher tier assets into yield earning floors. Um, and this lazy minting idea, which I'll, I'll kind of come on to more later on, which is something Alex um, had in mind around kind of distribution as well. And then integrations, you know, we're working hard and like Toes is doing a fantastic job um, speaking with various people, but aggregators, wallets, um, you know, DeFi apps, you're doing a lot with Rari at the moment. Um, and obviously on indexes as well with NFTI and, and others. And then on the product side, more of a focus on like the De DeFi volume and fee um, generating stuff and um, m further beyond that, like the NFT distribution itself. So this is kind of like the ecosystem as it stands. I mean, this is probably a limited view, but just to give you an idea of what we're doing, like. The, the NFTX marketplace and like distribution products that are shown here are just kind of products on top of the protocol within you know an ecosystem of, pro of, of products. Um, we've also got FloorDAO here, which NFTX um, has a like 2% share of, and, and that's been a driver of liquidity. If you've been following, uh, FloorDAO's got like 10 million or so in, in liquidity that's now um, driving volume on, on NFTX. And then we've got others that will drive volume and drive fees and and liquidity as well and we just kind of see the future of uh, of a lot of like our growth to be through in integrations um, now that we've got this flywheel kind of up running and this kind of like liquidity volume and fees thing is just where the deep fucking value is so this is where we really are kind of focused and we don't want to you know when we think about decisions we make on products we really want to be thinking about how are we driving more volume how are we driving deeper liquidity or or improving fees so currently we're kind of this monolithic thing, uh, marketplace yield and distribution, do everything in one go. And we probably do the marketplace best, but there's huge like amounts lacking on yield and distribution. So in the future, we're looking to separate this out and have three separate products. One focused on yield, which we're building right now, uh, the marketplace obviously, which currently exists, and then a whole separate distribution app for creators. And this will all be underpinned by nftx.js. Which I'll spin through, uh, like I'll just kind of fly through some of this technical stuff. But yeah, uh, NFTX.js would just be like the backbone of what we use to build our products and what other people will use to build products on NFTX. And then we have the marketplace, obviously, which, which most people will know if you've used NFTX. Um, and that's kind of that served its initial pr purpose of kickstarting this flywheel. And as I was saying earlier, like aggregators are beginning to kind of take over the buy side of NFTX. Um, but we, and we're also seeing like, you know, sell side coming in as well. So if someone's going to be listing an item on OpenSea, having a flag, like a warning to say, well, hey, you could like instantly sell this on NFTX at a similar or even a better price, um, making sure people are aware of this. So, you know, it's not just left up to MEV bots and arbitrages to, to take those gains. Um, so the marketplace is going to turn towards focusing on things that we kind of control that are much more um much less likely to be found in aggregators at least in the near term which are things like instant swaps as well as those kind of trade up and trade down listings that i was talking about so just on the yield, the yield side um yeah so running our yield kind of like DeFi degen app alongside the same as like the nft side has been you know kind of uh, a complicated kind of uh the fight between you know, maybe less DeFi friendly NFT users and you know, DeFi users that d don't get enough from, from the yield product that we currently have. So we're looking to split this out, focus much more on uh, the actual like financial aspect of, of everything going on rather than kind of the visual um, and just give people much more tools to, to just make everything much easier for LPs that want to get involved. 
And then on the distribution side, this is like something I think will be really powerful when we come, when we come around to it, but taking away the idea of doing ERC721 distributions um, and, and turning them into ERC20. So when it comes to distribution, you have like the composability of things like Copper Launch and LockFi. Um, you have the broad distribution, you have fractionalization, so it's more accessible. Um, instant liquidity post mint, so people can like, will have that guarantee of, of floor liquidity and they won't feel like they can just get rubbed straight away. Uh, you can improve like the gas wars, like through ticketing systems that Kiwi from Uru Labs kind of um, played with as well. And you have like gamification that you can do, you know, with random, random redeems and that kind of stuff. And then Alex kind of made a really good tweet recently, um, which is something he's talked about a lot in the past, but having the idea of like taking all the, the fees from a raise and just kind of holding on to them um, without any incentive to continue building um, is not necessarily the best way to go about things. And actually having like vesting floor tokens that are paid out to the team, you know, that's something that we could look at um, supporting with, with a distribution product. So yeah, integrations are another focus for the products. Uh, these are like low resource ways to increase liquidity and drive volume. So those two like key things for our flywheel, whether it's like, um, yeah, using GEM for the marketplace activity or NFTI for like rebalancing volumes, floor down for like increasing the liquidity, uh, you know, whatever it might be. And I'm sure many kind of products that are yet to be imagined uh, will come out, but these kind of integrations are where we still see like some very, very um, strong gains to come. So just to finish up then, uh, near time priorities, Uniswap V3 migration being absolutely key. Um, we'll see some like amazing, amazing use cases come out of that, I'm sure. And, and liquidity providers will be very happy with the, the benefits there. Then we've got the Metapy products that we're looking to launch alongside V3, if that kind of times well, but they're not critical to come together. And then kind of distribution product and, and this trade up and trade down listing stuff. Um, so this is kind of on the immediate um, or midterm horizon right now. Uh, Metapy products, we're cracking through pretty well and should be should be ready within the next um, six or to eight weeks or so. And that concludes. Thanks for listening. Awesome. Thanks, man. That's awesome. I, uh, I love that that one image, the deep fucking value. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make that my uh, wallpaper. Uh, yeah, it's cool. You you uh, put my tweet in there from yesterday. Definitely noticed that like I've I've kind of um, gone on about that idea before and like yesterday seemed like the first time that a lot of people were kind of in support of this idea of kind of leveling up how NFT distributions are done and how like the team's uh, earnings should go. So I think that just kind of shows that the, the whole space is kind of growing um, and perhaps just kind of fed up with the current model. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of potential for us in the future. Pretty exciting. Um, so should I pass it off to NFTI? Um, do you guys want to, um, do you have a deck that you're going to or? Sure. Yeah. I have a one slide that guides me a little yeah. bit to what I'm talking about. So you can quickly. Yeah, sure. Go through um, that. I'll pass it off to you guys. Um, just so everyone knows, Nathan and uh, Christoph are from uh, the NFTI team. Um, it's behind that probably the biggest NFTX token index at the moment. Yeah. Well, yeah. Thanks for the, that introduction. And thanks a lot for having us, um, letting us show, I guess, how the NFTX tokens enable this product. So without NFTX tokens, this would not be possible. So I think it's pretty nice for you guys to see, you know, what derivatives are being built on top of uh, your platform, your protocols, and your tokens. Um, yeah, so quickly introduce Scalara. Um, we are the index provider and methodologist as part of DeFi Pulse. So we are mostly known as the creator and maintainer of the DeFi Pulse index, available as the DP DPI token, and also the flexible leverage um, indices like F2X Fly, um, you know, the flies. Um, I'm going to start just briefly with a quick definition of an index, but I guess you, you guys probably all, all know that, that an index is a rules-based investment strategy. That's most commonly indices are baskets. And for example, in TreadFile, you have something like the S&P 500, which is the 500 largest US listed stocks. Or as I said before, DeFi Pulse Index, it's 
the largest, most prominent DeFi protocols. Um, indices are probably the most successful like, financial innovation in the last few decades in traditional finance. There's about $10 trillion in ETFs right now. Uh, and I think most people are aware of ETFs or invest in ETFs through their retirement accounts or personally, uh, through trading and so forth. So they've been very popular on TradFi and uh, yeah, slowly finding their way also up in, in DeFi as more popular products for people that mainly want to have a low cost product that provides passive exposure. So you don't have to spend a lot of time researching and picking and choosing and looking for alpha. You buy and hold and invest in a broad market or in a broad theme. Um, and the main features actually that you benefit from diversification. And there's this famous quote that diversification is the only free lunch in investing from one of the main, uh, I guess, from a Nobel laureate uh, in, in, in economics, um, because it basically allows you to lower your risk without necessarily um, giving up your returns. So that's kind of the main diversification is the main driver behind the index revolution, if I, if I call it like that. Um, so now look at my slide. I'm going to first quickly talk about why. Why did we decide after DPI and the flies, why did we create an NFT index? And then I'm going to get into the, the how. Um, so why was pretty much as an index provider, we're looking for uncorrelated returns. Because as I said, diversification is one main uh, goal for investors. And you need uncorrelated asset classes and returns to really make um, that are needed for diversification benefits. Um, so after having products, that track the Ethereum uh, and Bitcoin markets with our flies. So you have long and short exposure to the flies to these uh, two products. And we had DPI that gives you DeFi protocol exposure. Um, we looked at NFTs and saw them as a unique new asset class that is quite distinct to existing um, product, uh, yeah, to existing um, products. And also we saw there's actually quite a distinct user base. So it's not just the performance is different, but if I, I guess, generalize it a little bit, the average deep, um, um, DeFi user is a bit more technical oriented, focuses on the tech behind the protocols and maybe on the financial and economics. Um, but the majority of NFT buyers and traders and, and holders um, are probably quite different in that sense that they don't care so much about the underlying technology and a lot more about the art. Um, they're also a lot more um, known in popular culture. So they're also different in the, in the user base. And then lastly, why we created an index is, of course, that indices have the advantage that they lower the, the barrier of entry into that market and make things a lot cheaper. Um, because once you have an index to token tracking the index, that's an ERC-20, it's, of course, fractionalized. So you don't have to spend uh, high floor prices to get exposure to very expensive blue chip NFTs, but you can buy a little share similar to pretty much uh, the NFTX protocol. Um, and of course, an index. If you have several of them together, you socialize the costs involved with maintaining an investment strategy because you're several people together in one uh, fund. Um, so how did we achieve this? Well, the main reason is, of course, NFTX tokens. We spent some time last year looking how can we basically solve that problem to make ERC-721s investable in most of the DeFi protocols that are needed to create an index, like the, the Vault protocols or the index maintenance protocols. And the degree was only one that had the that had like the breadth and the depth and that was NFTX. The amount of tokens available and also the amount of liquidity was unique. So it was pretty easy to 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 take these as the primitives and the building blocks for for the index. And then methodologies, as I said, the goal was to have a blue chip, um, like diversified blue chip NFT exposure for users. Um, so we had to make sure that we, well, we tried to pick the largest tokens. So we select um, collections that have to be at least 20,000 ETH um, floor market cap. Um, but size is not the only requirement. I think for blue chips, we also think that there should be a strong community behind it. It should be well established. They should be behind their initial spike. There's of course the, the well-known first launch spike. And if something just spikes in the first day, that's not a blue chip. So we also wait a little bit for the project to mature, build up its community. Um, and then secondly, it has to be investable. And that's uh, guaranteed by using NFTX tokens that makes it make sure that the index um, and the underlying constituents are investable so it can be minted and redeemed, which is important for an index. Um, and I guess as you see in the chart as a result right now, it's punks, doodles, mebits, world of women, cool cats, um, 
Chromie squiggle and totes in the index. I guess most people would agree that these are uh, blue chip collections have been around for a while, and have strong, st very strong following each. Um, and the second feature, which of course is uh, kind of new compared to our other indices, is that by using NFTX, we actually don't use the V tokens, we use the X tokens in the index. Um, since uh, the index protocol that we use is Kuiper, which is kind of a hidden gem protocol because it's not depending on DEX liquidity, but can be actually rebalanced using market makers through an auction. So we can use X tokens that even though they don't have uh, DEX liquidity, um, you can guarantee that it can be rebalanced and minted and redeemed. And the yield, given these uh, seven constituents that we have, I think used to be around 10% APR. More recently with uh, the market being more volatile, it's actually good for the yield. So it's kind of 14% more recently. So it's been going up, which is uh, great to see. And um, yeah, the token by now, which is, um, is available on mainnet, but it's also found its way through bridging to Arbitrum Polygon, which is uh, very nice because it basically means you can really get exposure to these um, NFTs, which cost like $100,000 or more for like fractions of a cent because transactions fees are low, um, main, uh, maintenance costs are low. So that's actually great to see that they are being traded on, on Arbitrum and, and Polygon. Yeah, if there are any more questions, I'm happy to to answer them. Awesome. Well, I just, I just, I just want to add on that last point, Christoph. You know about about it being available on on layer two or Arbitrum. I think that's from from the NFTX perspective. I think that's one of the cool things about NFTI because it does open up new user types. So you know, for example, if you wanted to put like a, a few hundred dollars to work and you you believed in you know blue chip. NFT price floors, you were previously pretty limited in, in options to, to do that. You know, the, the NFTs themselves are obviously priced well beyond that. And transaction costs on mainnet mean that, you know, even buying NFTX tokens isn't isn't a great option. But NFTI being on Arbitrum, you know, it means it means that there's a low ticket price uh, bet on a diversified group of NFT collections that you can make uh, for you know, very efficient transaction execution. Um, and so that's why it's been great to see some some early tran traction on, on Arbitrum. Um, and, you know, by the way, that's that's some liquidity in NFTX tokens that you likely otherwise wouldn't have seen at this point. Yeah, totally. Um, it, it is interesting about Arbitrum and Polygon because it's gotten us talking about how um, it would be really cool to see like our vault tokens uh, gaining more liquidity on these layer two networks. Um, and then basically they would get uh, mainnet is where they would get minted and redeemed um, and where like the reserves would exist. But then the tokens themselves can still travel to these other layer twos uh, where they can be traded with like lower fees uh, and in smaller amounts. And so, yeah, that's a pretty cool. Uh, aspect of like this partnership is that it's kind of opened up that bridge, um, hoping that that kind of grows over the next six months. Yeah, for sure. And just like, I would love it, you know, if, if NFTI is the kind of tip of the spear on any L2 that gets, uh, that gets, that gets some traction for, you know, using NFTX tokens on the, on mm -hmm. those frontiers. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. We deployed on Arbitrum recently, like our protocol, and then I think we're planning Polygon pretty soon too. Those seem to be like the two of the most popular at the moment. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's really cool seeing you guys do this because like originally uh, I started NFTX and the whole purpose was index funds. Um, and then we kind of uh, pivoted away from that more to like the liquidity and yield. Um, and then that's how we ended up with these X tokens that um, can actually gain yield just from like swaps. And now it's like these X tokens are being built into an even superior product for indexes. Uh, so yeah, I wish I could say that I planned all that out ahead of time, but it just kind of happened. Um, and it's pretty awesome like that you can have uh, this array of tokens that you're getting like 14% yield on. Um, and there's no uh, impermanent loss risk. And uh, yeah, those can be kind of mixed together in fractional amounts. And uh, yeah, it's great that you guys do the, the hard work of deciding which tokens to include. 
because I know some people always get upset. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think, I guess it was necessary first to build up the liquidity and the NFDX protocol, I guess, in my chart, like these Lego money Legos mm -hmm. were necessary first. You have to make them uh, accessible and create like the, yeah, the breadth and the depth so that people have all the NFTs available that they want and the liquidity. And then it's a lot easier than to create these like derivatives, like in, like, yeah, like NFTI or FlawDAO and so on. So I guess. Yeah, totally. Um, that was the ma our major problem originally is that we couldn't get enough liquidity. So um, we thought, well, we have to start incentivizing that somehow with fees and yield. But um, it's really cool to see it kind of go like full circle and that you guys are doing this now. Because I, I do totally agree that like there's this massive use case for people that want to get into the NFT market. Um, I mean, I even talked to like my parents and relatives they want to get into the NFT market, but like they don't know which NFT they should buy. And like I always just tell them, you know, you should check out this NFTI token. Um, it's kind of like a REIT um, or like, and it's just like this index of all these different items and you can actually earn yield on it. And, uh, it, you know, it does the complicated thinking for you because it's, they're deciding like what to include. So yeah, it's, um, yeah. it's really cool what you guys are doing. Yeah. Yeah, that's all my main thought is. Of course, there's a lot of people that enjoy searching for alpha, and especially in DeFi, there's a lot of people that the, the degens that enjoy spending hours every day and finding the newest, yeah, uh, alpha. But there's also a lot of people, especially in TradFi, that do not want to spend five hours a day uh, researching their portfolios and so on, and they just yeah, prefer in, in TradFi and ETF and just you know, lean back, buy and hold, and probably the same in if there's an opportunity, uh, the same offering in in DeFi that makes it easier for these people to to get into it. Yeah, I, th I think it'll be interesting if the um, NFT index uh, TVL start going up a lot. I think it, in a way it would almost entrench certain collections as being blue chip. Because um, like if NFTI has this massive you know, TVL, um, then the chances of any one of those collections that's included like going down in value, it's lower because you're basically raising up the floor price with um, all these investors. So yeah, it's... Um, it's an interesting dynamic there. I do, I do think it's definitely going to keep growing, uh, yeah. you know, going into next year. Yeah. Well, there's definitely a problem we don't mind having. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No <laughs> doubt. <laughs> That's cool. Um, so yeah, I guess we'll open it up now. If anyone has any questions uh, from the community, uh, I don't know how many people are. Got a few people here. Um, so yeah, I'll just kind of be quiet for a second. If anyone wants to ask something, feel free to like drop it in the chat or just speak up. Uh, Christoph, I had a question around like redemptions. You may have like covered this and sorry if I, I missed that, but is there any like uh, redemption mechanism or planning to have anything like that for the underlying? Yeah, sure. So the, the protocol that is used um to build up the index or that is the index vault is kuiper um and that has a mint and burn functionality already so you can go to kuiper and find the address and go to etherscan and then there's the mint and redeem functionality oh, available cool. yeah just i guess for index it's necessary whenever um i guess the net asset value of the index is above or below the price so if there's a spread between the dex price and the net asset value um an arbitrageur could step in if gas fees are not too high and, and either mint and a token and then sell it or buy an index token and then redeem it. So that's, that's possible. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. And I think we're, we're in discussions about some other stuff about uh, better ways to arbitrage those amounts. So yeah, definitely uh, keep side burring about that. Yeah. And I, there's probably some more information needed around it. I think in general, I guess this art market is a bit more for sophisticated users because you have to know the, the correct ratios and where to find them to, to mint and redeem. But um, yeah, I think that's yeah, something to, to spend more time. On. Yeah, for sure. No, it's, um, it's, a, it's a tough problem because we have like these time locks, as a lot of people know. Um, and that's to you know stop certain loopholes from people avoiding uh, mint and redeem fees. Uh, but then the time locks also add a challenge in terms of composability. So um, solvable problem. Uh, we just got to kind of settle on something.
All right, any other questions? Hey, hi guys, hi everybody. Hey. Yeah, I would like to to know how um, I didn't understand why there is no risk of uh, impermanent loss uh, for EL. I didn't understand that uh, that detail of the um, of the feature of the of the platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically on NFTX, um, we have two types of staking. Uh, one type is liquidity staking, and that does have impermanent loss uh, because you're pairing Ether. Uh, with a token. So for example, like the punk token and ether, and as the prices go up and down, you end up with impermanent loss. Uh, but the other type of staking that we added more recently, is called inventory staking. And basically, you just add um, the NFT token. So for example, the punk token, um, and you don't add any ether. And then um, basically, if, if the punk price goes up, like you still benefit from that whole rise, um, because it's, it's not paired with another asset. Uh, and inventory stakers, they don't get as much fees or yield as liquidity stakers. They only get 20% uh, because, you know, they're not taking on impermanent loss. But basically the way we saw it is that even if people are just staking uh, the NFT token like Punk, it's still a good thing for the vault. Because if somebody, you know, in theory, if somebody came along and staked like 100 Punk, that would drastically increase uh, the diversity of NFTs that people can pick from. It'd be like a hundred more crypto punks for people to choose from. So it wouldn't improve the liquidity, um, you know, we, which is that's still an important aspect. And that's why 80% of fees go to the liquidity providers. But uh, yeah, it is possible to just stake the inventory and then still earn like a fraction of those fees. And those are like the X tokens. So like X punk, X toads. Um, and then those are the tokens that NFTI uses is just these uh, single asset tokens that don't have um, impermanent loss risk. Okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I okay. get it. I get it. Good question. Cool. Um, I guess we can call it for today. Be a, another two months before our next meeting. So hopefully we get a lot done in that time. Uh, it's a really ambitious roadmap that CAPS has planned for us, but I'm pretty sure we can execute on most of it. And uh, really appreciate the NFTI guys coming by today. It was a good presentation. It's nice to have some friendly faces here. So uh, yeah, I guess uh, until next time. Thanks everyone. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks. thanks. Bye. Bye.